Did you know there's a whole section of the internet dedicated to making fun of niggas who have grass? Why? It's so specific. That should be going hard, son. They'd be like, they'd be like your ancestors' lawn. It shows like flowers and weeds and all kind of shit. Your fucking lawn, <laughs> bitch ass nigga ain't got no shelter. <laughs> <laughs> like what? Wonder why we killing bees? Your dumbass spent seven thousand dollars on this shit. <laughs> My yard has rocks. I'm out of here. And it's funny as fuck because in Vegas you all have rocks out here, or you go turf, which is you know actually pretty sustainable. You know what I mean? It's fake fucking it grass. Ain't going nowhere. It's a desert. It's gonna burn up. Yeah. Like why? So then all them shits are funny to me. Every fucking your dumbass. Save has your grass, grass money and just move. Montana is really cheap. It was sponsored by my need for validation. It's okay because it's an otter. Life is just a never-ending game of Jenga, where all you're trying to do is build something worth the effort without it all crashing down and scratching your mother's what? coffee table. Huh. He was kind of spitting right then, actually. Kinda. Mm-hmm. The thing with Jenga is, every block's important, but some blocks are just an instant game over. Nature's kind of the same way. Every animal, from mosquitoes to monkeys, from pigeons to platypuses, everything with a heartbeat has some type of role in this giant ball of dirt and water. But where losing some animals might be bad for the environment, losing certain animals could be GG's for the whole thing. The worst part is, we usually don't know which block is a trip block until someone plays God and pulls it. Like with the sea otter. Okay, disclaimer, I don't think I've ever been more conflicted about an animal. Like, I'm smart enough to know these water wolverines are wild animals that'll play gotcha nose with their teeth, and that'll have you looking like you could unlock Voldemort's phone. But I'm also dumb enough to let them, <laughs> just cause they're cute. I'm aware they have one of the most violent mating rituals I've ever read about, but uh -huh. they also hold yeah. hands while sleeping and they wrap their babies in cup blankets so they don't float away. One See? thing I will say is that without these water weasels, the ocean would almost certainly be in a pack. And it's all because sea otters need a borderline eating disorder just to survive. These guys are all marine mammals, but one is not like the others. Sea otters don't have blubber or a layer of fat to keep them warm. When you live in the ocean full time, that's living life on veteran difficulty. Which is why sea otters can put away 25% of their body weight in food every single day. All just yeah, to fuel their metabolism and not freeze from otter to article. 25% in food would be like me downing 95 Big Macs. I know this because I did the math, don't ask me if I have a problem, I probably do. These furry food vacuums have a grocery list of basically anything that isn't nailed down. But the most important thing they eat are sea urchins. Motivated male can put away up to 50 sea urchins in a 24 hour bitch. Get the fuck Which is what out makes this here. high sea honey badger one of those do not touch Jenga blocks. Cause sea urchins are vicious vegans that eat kelp like they get paid for it. Kelp forests provide food as well as shelter and a nursery for several species of animals. Not only that, but this water cactus will literally spawn camp. They'll go into this weird hibernation on top of a kelp bed but only reanimate to eat any seaweed that sprouts up. So without wow. orders to keep the sea urchins in check, a bunch of animals would basically become homeless if not starve to past tense completely. Pretty much jenga this entire community. And it literally took nearly hunting this live action plush toy into extinction before he realized this. Show this picture before for a reason. In places where sea otters were stat padded into oblivion and the sea urchins started wilding out, what used to be kelp forests quickly became underwater deserts. Basically the right. worst dead spots. Instead of a PWY, this dead spot represents the loss of an ecosystem that actually helps us more than most people realize. Add the fact that kelp forests help fight climate change, you begin to realize just how wild the butterfly effect really is. Some guy liked the way a certain coat fell, next thing you know, global warming's up 3-1 on us. See our yeah, but like, we don't really talk about how much pelting we did. Like, to put that in perspective, like how, what, what is the, what, what, East India Company, what the fuck? Is East India Trading Company? My nigga. They had pelts on, by the tons. Yeah. Damn, that's a lot. You got me fucking buffalo and... Rabbit and fucking shit you gotta kill to get tons of pelts? Hey, you know, I'm not gonna say it. I'm gonna find a way around saying what I wanna say. Okay. Like, we've extincted a lot of stuff. Who's we? The fuck you mean we? You can't just throw the royal we around, nigga? People. <laughs> what do you mean humans? Humans. My niggas are from Trinidad and Tobago. Well, I wasn't gonna say what I wanted to say. <laughs> <laughs> you can make fun of regionally, historically, uh, 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 you know. White people have put a lot of animals on shirts. Uh, bro, hunting from <laughs> trains was just the skinny of it. From, 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 from the top to the bottom of the America. What the fuck are they called? Canada to Mexico. Mm -hmm. You thought what they did to people was bad. You see what they do to everything? Everything. Literally everything. <laughs> <laughs> the only ones with that kind of power. 
This is a wolf eel. It's not a wolf, it's not an eel, it's a fish fresh out of Tim Burton's wet dream. If you've never heard of it before, it's because pretty privilege is painfully real. But I yeah. will say this, Nemo's paralysis demon has a relationship many people wish they had. Wolf fish mate for life, and when a male and Look female do parallel, they the are. basically move in together. And when they have kids, they'll take turns getting groceries, with one staying behind to guard the eggs while the other one eats. It's nope. basically like how I feel about people from high school that like got together, and he was like, they was meant for each other. Like, look at them. Bruh. <laughs> Bruh. Looking like that. The one that does stay behind will generally I was, I couldn't imagine being, still being sure with, being with the person I dated in high school. Circulation. At worst, it's was racist. parenting, and at best, it's a marriage worth slapping a comedian yeah. over. It's a <laughs> But she didn't know. She was great. Her family, though. Man. Mm -mm. Remember when you wore that do-rag and you just told me about it? Anyways. The marriage where everyone is. But speaking Sorry, of eating, guys. that's actually what makes this fish another important block in the ocean's Jenga tower. Since they'll use that demonic overbite to eat animals like the sea urchin. And the Atlantic wolfish in particular eats enough sea so urchin. So honestly, it's just fuck the sea urchin. Right. Like, it's not, they're not talking about balancing Jenga. Anything that fucks up sea urchins is good for everything. Right, so we should start going to get them. Why don't y'all use your evil extinction powers for good? Yeah, get like a sea urchin sock or something. Right. Ooh, God no. <laughs> you put the sock on one time. Sea urchin, like, body suits, like for the water. Like, just take all the little thingy things and... Like put on, put try on. to make it into some leather or something. You I see know? what you're trying to say. You feel it? I bet you Batman can make a cold outfit out of some sea urchins. Sea urchin back scratchers. I'm sure that neurotoxin will feel great on your skin. What is it that's in their little spines that isn't good for you to touch? A sea urchins, right? I, man, I don't know. I, <laughs> I avoid all type of water. With oh, that's in. right. You're scared of water stuff. Yeah. My bad. This is a fun video. <laughs> <laughs> we'll make it short. We won't do the whole thing. I'm I just, forgot. I'm I just can, like, if any of that touched my thing, foot, I'm losing. This thing is over here like, fuck this whole video. Right. <laughs> I, I was cool with the otter because he looked furry it's and he's a at the top of the water. Yeah. But now we're in it. <laughs> my bad. Just to where if you thought it was them, a lot of animals would be down bad too. But they don't get the credit otter do because, well... Who would you rather turn into a stuffed animal? That's why sea otters and the Atlantic wolfish are both considered keystone species. Keystone cool. basically means that in the Jenga Tower of Life, taking out the keystone or block would turn the entire tower into ground zero. And I would love to pretend the whole Jenga analogy was a play on the word keystone, but uh... Nah, I didn't realize that till halfway through writing this. Sometimes I'm not clever. Bro, halfway through is a fucking dub. Yeah. Yeah. Good shit, dude. Sometimes people don't realize until after they post it and go, I was spitting. Yeah, I did that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just lucky. Obviously, if you delete an entire species, there's always going to be some kind of net negative. But with a keystone like the otter, it would be a thousand times worse. Like, even though they're both important, missing Michael Jordan for an entire playoffs is going to hit a little different than losing Luke Longley. And as a Heat fan, not having Mario Chalmers for a finals game might cost me an hour of sleep. Take out LeBron and suddenly I'm an insomniac. There's a bunch of different types of keystone species, but one of the most famous and it's the one you likely learned about first are good. probably beavers. Since beavers shape their entire communities just by being themselves. They're bucktooth engineers that'll build dams to create ponds. In the middle of these ponds are lodges, and that is the beaver's home address. Having waterside real estate makes it less likely for them to get turned into a happy meal by bears, wolves, cougars, coyotes, owls, lynxes, bobcat. You see why they need the lodge? Without it, they're the lollipop of the north. They take licks from everybody. But it also means in some places, beavers are single-handedly responsible for creating wetlands. Making the beaver yet another key block on the Jenga tower. Beaver dams and the wetlands they create lead to more herbaceous plants growing by the water. They also help clean out pollution from rivers and streams. And about half of the endangered species in North America depend on the wetlands the beavers help engineer. Basically take out this plus size water gerbil and you're sentencing several animals to the gulag too. Also, if you play the sound of running water on a speaker, beavers will instinctively start building a dam over it. That has nothing to do with anything, I just find that fact fun. But unlike beavers, most keystone species are usually predators and that concept's pretty simple. Without an equalizer to eat the prey, the prey would ironically eat themselves and everything around them to death. Which is why tiger sharks also earn a keystone oh, title. Right. Here are some things that have been found inside a tiger shark. License plate. Are you good? You, are we good here? Okay, are we, okay. all right. We're gonna boots, boots, bag nothing. of money, right. a chicken coop, a full suit of armor, and a human leg. One thing about sharks, they're not racist. They don't see color and they do not discriminate. 
And just like with otters and sea urchins, tiger sharks are population control for a bunch of animals, like sea turtles, especially the ones that like to graze on seagrass. Seagrass that's an important habitat and shelter for fish and shellfish. It's an easy domino effect. No tiger sharks means more sea turtles, means less seagrass, means more fish and shellfish on the streets. Or in this case, reefs. Which is why most sharks are considered God keystones in the ocean community. For example, when most of the great white sharks in the North Atlantic got packed up, that led to the number of cow nose rays exploding. Those rays proceeded to decimate nearly the entire population of scallops, clams, and oysters. Sharks are the ultimate equalizer. Take them out and that tower gets less stable than the marriage of a comedian slapping back in the 90s rapping air to Bel Air. Yeah, that's, that's probably strike two. Oftentimes, it takes the tower toppling over to realize just how important that, that was block good. was. Best example is when we literally had the mess around and find out in Yellowstone. If that you haven't heard really this story, good. you better hear some sh Once upon a time, the cousin of man's best friend was public enemy number one, and wolves got put on a list. And right. the reason why? Well, if wolves didn't hate us before, they had a really good reason to now. Basically, in the before time, settlers came on the scene with their livestock, mostly cattle. As the practice of agriculture grew, animals on the wolves' grocery list like buffalo started disappearing from the aisles. All it took were a few going after livestock for America to declare a war on wolves. Any wolf that was spotted within the same area code as livestock was immediately taken off yeah. the census with brutal prejudice. At one point, even the U.S. Army showed up and got their shots up. And to add insult to massacre, <laughs> in 1883 there was a law passed that prohibited hunting of most animals in the park. And wouldn't you know, wolves were not most animals. We really? tried to justify it by calling wolves an undesired predator and implied that the environment would be better off without them. What? Basically, America With no fucking wolves. research at all. Yeah. Like if you broke into my house, replaced most of the food in my refrigerator, and then turned me and my family into chalk outlines for touching the ground beef you left in my freezer. Now, guys and gals, on a scale from Reddit incel to Tiana Trump, how screwed do you think we were after we basically squad wiped wolves? That was hilarious. Who was that? That was magical. Okay. And I loved every second of it. Right. I I was waiting for the... Get well, Tiana Trump's like the most famous right now uh -huh. black porn star. The answer? They call her the throat goat, head doctor. That was beautiful. So from incel, yeah. redded incel, yeah. to the cream of the crop. Right. Let's see. I, I need we to got know. casting couched. Without wolves oh. applying top-down pressure. <laughs> <the> <laughs> <laughs> it did not disappoint. Yeah, and that was perfect timing. The population got out of pocket and they ate the area code. Because even with cougars, coyotes, and even bears, the main thing keeping the elk down got put on a newspaper by us, and as a result, it stripped the land of vegetation. But it actually went deeper than that. Without the threat of wolves keeping the elk on the move, the elk were able to stay in one place and eat that place completely clean. Mm -hmm. Animals that relied on wolf leftovers like ravens, magpies, and even bears had to get the protein elsewhere. And if that wasn't bad enough, one of the things that the elk destroyed was the willow. The same willow that damn building beavers needed to survive the winter. Really? The same beavers responsible for creating wetlands. Which meant yet another Jenga block that hit the hardwood. And I like to imagine the wolves that got murked on site watched this all go down from the afterlife like... Yeah, ain't that a bit? It got to the point where we <laughs> had to airdrop wolves back to Yellowstone to try to uno reverse the damage. And by the time we did that, there was only one colony of beavers left. Today there's about Shit. 100 wolves left in Yellowstone after we did everything in our power to abolish them. Because removing a keystone species is like leaving a toxic relationship. But then your life gets worse and worse until you realize you were the problem. It's honestly the butterfly effect served on Trent. And again, you never know which block's going to be the game over. For example, one of these guys was one of the first animals to be identified as a keystone species. Any idea which one? It was actually the purple sea star. This is Robert Payne. He's a zoologist who was credited with coming up with the keystone concept. He's also six foot six. Mm, God, must damn. be nice. To better understand how nature and all the things in it are connected, Payne ventured out to a bay near Washington State, where he proceeded to work. Yeah, and I don't care about starfish. I'm sorry. I don't care about starfish either. I get it. Keystone species, I'll make my wife finish the video. I've never killed an animal, so I don't, it doesn't matter. Have you really never killed an animal? Do pigeons count? No. Okay. No, they fucking don't. They don't count. Piece of shits. Because they were made by the government. <laughs> That's not where I thought you were going with that. I thought you were just gonna be like, because they're disgusting or some kind of. They also shit on my car. That's what I thought we were gonna get from that. Pew, pew. Not government conspiracy birds. <laughs> Chavez Slovakia, thanks for joining. My brother is alive, but he's not gonna be as in many videos as he was last year, okay? Just a hard fact of life. Even though he has a car, he has transportation, has more money, is generally more stable, happier, more stories, he's just not gonna share it with you. And that's between you and him at this point. Uh, right now we're gonna go work out and make ourselves sad. Um, and we'll see you guys next week.
Next week, Wednesday. All right, then. Next week, Hashtag Wednesday. Hashtag with the D. Actually, Thursday, because you'll be here Wednesday. I'll edit it Thursday, put it out Thursday night. Yeah. Holla, y'all. Fuck them starfish. Fuck starfish.